Okay, here we are. Alt.nerd.obsessive. Worst episode ever. Hey everybody, welcome to Worst Episode Ever, a podcast for people who love The Simpsons by people of The Simpsons about how much we hate The Simpsons. We're here trying to find which is the worst episode ever. And as always, my name is Dan. And as always, my name is Dan. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, what was that again, Dan? <laughs> I don't, I don't know what that was. I'm sorry. Jack changed his name today. <laughs> it's not, it's not, since last week. It's not there. It's Jack. Oh, okay. I see. Uh, and today we are watching an episode from season 19 called E. Pluribus Wiggum. Originally aired January of 2008. Jack, have you seen this one? Yes. I don't remember it, but yes. Okay. I have not seen this one. I believe it is a political episode. Well, actually, January 2008, I was in Vegas with friend of the show Nick Noga at the Adult Video Awards. Very nice. <laughs> Working a freelance gig. Not what you probably uh, were well, expecting. You know, I hope you got something for it and not something... I got a free not, trip to Vegas. Not a venereal <laughs> disease is what I was trying to say. I, I didn't, uh, yeah, I just, that's good. Yeah. I saw Ron Jeremy in the casino. Was he winning? He's, he's winning at life. Oh, okay, good. Well, I'm glad. Um, anyway, we're doing... We're, I don't remember the episode, but we're doing it, obviously, because... Well, maybe not so obviously. Uh, we're doing it because Super Tuesday is uh, coming up, right? Or is it past? I have no idea, but we'll, <laughs> we're... we're, we're, we're doing, we, it's we, around the time this yeah, episode's this coming out. Before or after Super Tuesday, we came up with this idea uh, a while back, and now I don't remember. Yeah. Um, and if you're, you're from out of the States, Super Tuesday is one of the biggest primary days. It's like a bunch of states, uh, and... There's a good chance whoever wins this primary uh, it will probably be the front runner. will probably get the nomination. Although, who knows? This is a really weird race. We're recording this a couple weeks ahead of time. We don't even know who's still yeah, in it. We don't know. Um, it, it could be. But honestly, between, you know, if somehow Sanders pulls it off, which he probably wouldn't, uh, and if Trump pulls it off, which he very may, may well, they might still not be nominated because of uh, the way the parties work and superdelegates and everything. Yeah. But Usually, Super Tuesday is actually a very important part of the democratic process. We'll see. Again, democracy simply doesn't work, so uh, <laughs> so maybe not in this case. We'll see, but E. Pluribus Wiggum was suggested to us by Mason Brennan. Thank you, Mason. Thanks, Mason. Uh, Joanna Martinez. Oh, thanks, Joe. Brendan and thanks, Dan Br- Dennis thanks, and Brand. El Barto. Thanks, Dan and El Barto. Thank a lot of people you. suggested wow. this one. Okay, so I, we don't know who this mysterious El Barto is. No, we but, don't, but we but will find you. him and bring him to justice, <laughs> and we're going to do that. Uh, in a minute, after we take our break. But if you want to support the show, go to wepodcast.com, weepodcast.com, click on our Amazon links and shop like you normally would. We get a little cut. We like to get your money. Yeah. And that's about that. And yeah, and you can also find there our 90s podcast, 90s percentile. Yes, 90s percentile. It's going strong. It's like probably around uh, eight, nine, ten episodes by now. Yep. Uh, check that out if you haven't. It's... Uh, Eh, it's okay, but <laughs> it's it's a it's the show that someone enjoyed, <laughs> not us. I don't enjoy making it. Okay, so we're gonna take a break, and we are gonna watch Eplorbus Wiggum, and you should do it too. And go vote, or if this has already happened, good for you for voting, or bad for you for not voting. I've never voted in oh, my yeah, entire yeah, yeah, adult we, life. I forgot you're you're in one of those. I'm one of those. <laughs> we're taking a break. The following is a paid political announcement by the Republican and Democratic parties. Compassionate, tough. Curious. These are all words Ralph Wiggum doesn't know. But he doesn't need to know them. He lives them every day. I'm voting Ralph for president. His easy smile makes me think everything is okay, even when I know it ain't. I'm voting for Ralph, too. But don't tell you know who. On November 4th, vote for the latest in a long line of great American leaders. I want a tricycle and a dog who won't chew my Hot Wheels. And a brighter future for America. I'm Ralph Wiggum, and I've been a good boy. So that was E. Pluribus Wiggum. Um, it sure was, Jack. Before we get into it, uh, we did it. look it up. Uh, Super Tuesday already happened. Yes. Uh, so you so all know the results of that Tuesday. That was did crazy. Superman win or did Batman? <laughs> That's what we're talking about, right? Yeah, that's it. Okay. I mean, it's, it's so Batman. Justice man. has dawned, everybody. <laughs> um, I hope the candidate. I, I was going to say, I hope the candidate you voted for. A, one, but honestly, out of the entire pool, I don't want any of them to win. Like, yeah, well, I mean Sanders, I guess, but you know, he's not gonna do that great job. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is uh, this really. Uh, well, look, I, we don't. I, I we hope don't know they where our lost. listeners are. Right, I hope they all lost. 
We hope they all. We hope everyone I hope, lost. I hope every. I mean, we lost. Pretty much, we, we want this to be an anarchy nation yeah, where there's no the one in charge. I we just, want the purge to happen purge. every day, all day. I want Ethan Hawke to be there. Yeah, we don't know. Maybe the purge won. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe the purge, the purge won. won on Super Tuesday. There was a big surge <laughs> in the purge. Um, all right. So plot recap. Uh, all right. So <laughs> good uh, luck, Jack. Yeah, Homer uh, accidentally blows up the fast food district of Springfield, uh, and that leads to the uh, the idea. Did we look that up? Do we know why? Um, that, not. I did look it up, and there's not really a lot of yeah. answers. That leads. To, um, we don't. We're not. Me and Dan are not exactly sure how that led to the the idea that we, they they, they want to do the primary first. We just watched this episode, by the way. Yeah. Like, we literally just stopped this episode and started recording, and we yeah. don't know what happened to make <laughs> things happen in this episode. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how they get connected the the two plots. Let us know. We probably missed something. No, I don't um, we, we didn't miss anything. <laughs> it's right. it's all of a sudden it's just they want to they want to fix the fast food boulevard but they need to move they the primaries money, for yeah, some reason. So they they move the primaries ahead. You know, basically New Hampshire uh, The primaries and for what? Iowa, and how does that yeah. relate to getting money for the fast food? Right. Well, it's a presidential primary and uh yeah, Iowa's famous for having the caucus. New Hampshire's famous for being the first primary in the country. Uh it's a big deal to be first because because that you know you get all the attention and it starts some momentum. So anyway, Springfield is first now, even though it's a city, not a state. Right. I should also say I'm very apolitical yeah. and I have no care or yeah. interest in the political process. I'm so. extremely political, but I'm also completely jaded and resigned to yeah. it doesn't really matter. I, so, I, I, that's why I'm apolitical. I, uh, I you so know I, I care because I'm I I think I just have a higher capacity of suffering than you. I think I'm just and, more of a masochist. By the way, I don't want people to write in and be like, Dan, your vote counts and you should follow us. <laughs> so, don't do that. I, I, I don't want I, any I of that. I tell him you're right, and uh, you're, vote, you're, I live in New York. My vote doesn't. You're count. right to tell him his vote does count, but it's a, it's a lost cause. Don't if worry. I'm voting for like for mayor or yeah, an actual <laughs> person who I, my vote does count. Did you vote for the, what color M M&M? and M? I did. <laughs> what did you vote for? Blue. I think I voted for blue. I, I was against. So blue. I got a track record of picking winners, bro. No, I was against blue because M and M's were always autumnal colors, and blue is not an autumnal color. Like, not, it doesn't exist in. Uh, in I gotta say, I'm a loyalist. Leaf nature. I'm a loyalist. Plus, I, I eat that blue M M&M and M first every plus, time you know I what? see them. Blue, blue wasn't a new color; it replaced tan. They right. got rid of the tan. Tan was a terrible color. Tan was that a great needed color. to go. No, that it, needed to it go. It was like the color of milk chocolate. Right, but that's what you don't want. You need no. that candy coated shell. You, we you, still you, haven't gotten through. Heard it here recap. first, folks. Dan does not like M and M's of color. I didn't <laughs> say that at all. I like the most colorful ones. You said blue, you, you, because the blue, I like the white M and M's that will, come at Easter time. <laughs> you want to eat the blues because you wanted them to lose the Civil War against the Grays. That's exactly what, what it is. That's exactly what I said. Uh, um, anyway, plot recap. Uh, so they, for whatever reason, they decide to have a primary, and the episode is about this. It's about the primary is happening. Uh, also, we picked this because it was related to an election. I don't think we realized it was related to Super Tuesday. Which yeah, is, we uh, didn't realize how. Too close to primary, yeah. we were to so picking, even picking this episode, and even there's though, a lot of even though we didn't <laughs> strangely prescient things in this yeah, episode. Yeah, we'll, but get, we'll, into we'll get into that. Um, and uh, they don't know who to vote for, so Homer goes, "Why don't we just write in a candidate?" That's so stupid. I forget. Why. I guess they want to get rid of the media because the media is like driving them all crazy. I, I forget. I have no idea why they did yeah, this. They, there was a reason. They said it so anyway. Homer I'll comes up, up with the idea of. Uh, Homer comes up with the idea of writing in Ralph Wiggum because he's such a ridiculous candidate. Uh, and that's and so now Ra- the second and third act is really about Ralph is running and he's very popular. Everybody likes Ralph. Uh, the Republicans and the Democrats are fighting over who gets to have Ralph. Uh, and then uh, the episode ends with uh, Ralph deciding he... Uh, he wants to run for president because he thinks he can make America great again. And uh, he says, "And make America great again." <laughs> yeah, which is Donald Trump's. It's insane. Uh, I can't. I couldn't believe that. Yeah, that's yeah. Donald Trump's. That's Donald Trump's thing. So, he's got a hat with everything. He's still in in the race. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. Uh, so he runs, and the episode just kind of ends with uh, with Ralph seemingly uh, winning the race, but he's winning. He he's not not that he is in the process of winning. He just seems to be winning. Uh, right. Is that clear? Am I using the right win- term? Yeah, winning? It seemed like want, Ra- Ralph was yeah. the favorite to become yeah, president exactly. of America, and it ends with a political ad yeah, for Ralph. And then it just kind of ends. And it ends. So basically, I feel like this episode is... I don't want to say gimmick. It's it's almost like it. It feels like isn't it silly if Ralph Wiggum ran for president? That's like a, like one of those Simpsons doesn't really do this, but it seems more like it would be like one of those viral video shorts that like TV shows and stuff release. Yeah, like, you know, like kind of like an extra. 
doesn't it doesn't this, really work as a episode because this is not an episode of television. There's no story yeah, here. It's it's things like, just happen and it's it a promotion. Ends. It's like a promotion. Like this should have been like a Butterfinger com- string of commercials. Yeah, like you know, that would have been much better. Yeah, because it, it is. It's funny. It's like oh, wouldn't it be crazy if Ralph Wiggum? You know, everybody loves Ralph. Right. Uh, is it? You know, but that's not a that's not a Simpsons episode. This is a very difficult episode to watch critically because yeah. we can talk about individual scenes and whether we like the jokes or not. But at the end of the day, this is not a story. There's yeah. no story here at all. It just ends. And it does It does just end. And a few people suggested it uh, because of that problem. Yes. A few people like this episode. And Some I can like see that, again, because, again, it's not an episode. It's not a story. It's a gimmick. This would yeah. have been, like, if this was a Butterfinger commercial or a string of it commercials. It would have been a great Butterfinger it would have been commercial. A, I would have liked it. Or if it was a weird extra video on their website that went viral or something like you know right. whatever some other shows do that yeah i could see like oh that's did you see that thing where ralph was uh was running for president right. that was cute but i don't i don't like it as an episode no anyway so I, I, yeah it's gonna be hard to talk about this because it, re- it really doesn't feel like an episode and it well we'll get into the ending I, we'll talk about the ending at the end i guess yeah. we'll do something crazy <laughs> um, what <laughs> let's talk about the couch gag first though let's talk about the couch gag first so uh it's a bayo tapestry type thing where we Bayo. see <laughs> scott bayo <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're just referencing so many things are happening right two. now. Two, two. Well, the Bayo Three. Tapestry, Scott Bayo, and I've never, Bayo. Actually, I've never heard the, the term Bayo Tapestry. The Bayo I mean, Tapestry, I, know what I could tell what it is. It's but. the first comic book, if you believe Scott McCloud in understanding comics. Oh, I, I don't. It's a book. <laughs> you clearly didn't read it. <laughs> I know a lot about Scott Get Bayo. Get the fuck out of here, Shank. <laughs> No, uh, the Bayo Tapestry is kind of a, a historical document. It's a tapestry that looks much like this couch gag was. B A Y O. B A Y E U X. It's French. Oh, French. Um, Scott Bayo should have a, Scott Bayo, a Bayo Tapestry. He should run a business selling tapestries and call it <laughs> Bayo's Tapestries. I would buy one. He should. What else is he doing? He was doing that avocado commercial at the Super Bowl, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> You probably made more money during that commercial than we have in our lives. <laughs> you're, you're probably right. <laughs> um, because I don't make any money. Yeah, hey, avocado industry. We, we got a success. We got two successful podcasts. Why can't we be your avocado I, spokesperson? I would love to be your avocado abogado, which is lawyer. Tacos with guacamole on them. You know where guacamole comes from, don't you? Mexico. Uh, I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> I thought guacamole was just created, and we just found a <laughs> reservoir of it, and the world's guacamole... We're at peak guacamole right now. Oh, it's raining again. <laughs> so much for keeping this short. Uh, no, the couch gag, it's a, like a tapestry-type thing yeah. where we see the, the realm of Flanders, the realm of the Simpsons, and Flanders' uh, men take the Simpsons' couch, and so they go, yeah. and they sail across Why to would Flanders, fight him. Flanders was the last person in Springfield to You're steal right. something. If from... anything, the Simpsons should be stealing his couch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then it ends where they have cut him up into little pieces, and yeah, that's how and it ends. happy ending music plays. It's yeah. like, oh, isn't it great? We, they mutilated Flanders. It was <laughs> cute. It was well animated. Yeah. I get. I, I mean, just, I see why they did it. You know, they're doing 600 episodes. It's like I guess you just they're bored. They probably just want to do something different. I don't yes, blame them. I don't blame them either. I'm bored, and we've only done 72 <laughs> episodes. Uh, um, the uh, and like this could have been fine in another episode. I feel like since they went out of their way to do this gimmicky episode, maybe they should have done some kind of primary or election related couch. Oh, game. maybe. Yeah, that yeah. would have been interesting. Oh. But then the episode starts, uh, the actual episode starts, and we get a few different kind of disconnected scenes, especially given where the episode yeah. goes. It's funny because the very first scene is grounded, very much grounded in reality. It could have really yeah, been... Yeah, it really was. If the Simpsons had somehow, even though the the art and the, the humor and everything evolved uh, after 25 years, if the show still held on to its season one roots where it could exist in live action and it was right. about a working class family, mm-hmm. this scene could have fit in there in that it's about... Uh, yeah, like the boss is leaving, and Mr. You, Burns is leaving yeah, the power plant, and you want the boss to leave so that you can leave work. Right. And like now that I work a nine to five, I totally re- relate to that. Absolutely, I was just like oh, I, yeah, I just get that. That's like a slice of life thing, right? So we we see Homer and Lenny and Carl. They're looking out the window, waiting for Mr. Burns to leave. He's accosted by someone from the mailroom who's telling him this long, boring story about hang gliding. What's funny is you never hear. That conversation, you only see it right. from the... It's in the parking lot. You only see it from their perspective yeah, which up on like the third story. Yeah, uh, Great stuff. I was like, this is so far is a good episode. Yeah. It's uh, visually just different. It's nice to look at. It's, a, yeah. it's using direction to your advantage. A- absolutely. Uh, and so because now Mr. Burns is not leaving, Homer calls this mailroom guy who Mr. Burns is talking to and says, I've kidnapped your wife, and if you're not married, I've kidnapped your brother. Yeah. And then later on, he and, he, yeah. he resumes the threat, and he goes, that's it. Uh, uh, your dog is okay. Yeah, right. He, I'll he return your dog. Yeah, he kept forgetting. Right. What do you think about that? Because 
It was dark. It was a little dark. Um, Breaking Bad stole the idea eventually for uh, season three. <laughs> yeah, uh, where where Walt does that to uh, to Hank to get out of a situation. Yep, yep, yep. Um, to get Jesse yeah, out but, of a situation. But uh, it did. I. Oh, that's right. But it did make me laugh. Um, a, that Homer <laughs> forgot that it was a brother and it was a dog. Uh, and then the stuff like that, that ensues. Uh, I th- thought it was well, a Homer, stupid. Homer gets carried away with yeah. what he's doing. He, he wants to tell the guy, you got to leave, walk away from Mr. Burns. And he starts doing it. And Homer is like drunk with power and is like, now start dancing. Now yeah. dance like a happy prospector. Yeah. And, uh, which uh, get it out of your, which get, I liked. Get it out of your system. What? I don't understand what you're talking about. It was a good scene about a dancing happy prospector. Right. Mr. Burns danced, and that was cute. I liked it. Yeah, nothing was, to say about happy prospectors. You have, I don't know nothing, what you're talking nothing. about. Prospectors, what do I know about prospectors? I don't know. I, I just thought maybe you would want to do something and get it out of the way. I'd rather just do it so we can move on. Uh, some listeners apparently like it, and, and they want to hear more of it, even though I'm, st- I'm convinced there's a silent majority of uh, Nixonian Republicans who, uh, yeah, who hate this thing that I'm talking I about. Know, I don't know what you're talking about, but there was a prospector here. And, and Anyway, uh, I guess so and let's move on. We'll so. move on. All right, we'll move we'll on. Move on. So the, the important point, the important point hey, I want yes, I wanted to talk about the prospect machine. Doing a little dance. I'll see y'all at the bus stop. I'm, I'm going to see myself out. How do I get out of here? Is it this way? Is, any, the is door, it the same way I came in? The, the window? Can you? Do you need to buzz me? No, you can. You I have just, to buzz me no, out. I, just, do you validate I talking? Need, you only have to buzz people in. You don't have to buzz people out. I think you need to buzz me out. <laughs> it's not. This isn't Terminator Two. It's not. <laughs> Why did I break into Skynet? <laughs> Dan, are you, are you finished, Dan? I don't know what you're talking about. There was a very strange man in here, and he took my mic for a moment. But now he's gone. <laughs> that doesn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make a lick of sense. Uh, I bet you that was the last of our Canadian listeners we, we earned two weeks ago from our national radio interview. <laughs> yeah, it was. They hate prospect of humor. We like to, we, we, this podcast functions a lot like an immune system where we kill off all the cells that are weak, <laughs> but the strong ones stay strong and they keep listening and they love. <laughs> These assorted characters who come through these halls. Uh, so it's up to you, strong listeners, to buy a lot on Amazon because there's not <laughs> many of you left. Behemoth has drove, driven them all away. <laughs> I'm driving a bus now. <laughs> and I'm you, driving away. You kept making all the stops. <laughs> they kept ringing a little bell. <laughs> I'm a big Seinfeld fan, too. <laughs> I'll see y'all later. Seinfeld on a lot in the, in the mines. Uh, yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, that's the, that. The, that kind of scene uh, where they're trying to get out of the power plant. Yeah, the dancing. So Homer getting mad with power, making him dance, and all that. I thought that was too much. I didn't like it, but means just to find the end. I like that Burns likes watching this man dance. Yeah, didn't he, know why he was dancing, but he would like clap along. He just he got into his, his own like little jig kind <laughs> of thing. And, he, and it was again, great. It was because it was from a far away shot, like, and we don't hear anything. It was yeah. it was very cute. It was. It I was, love Mr. Burns, and yeah. my personal favorite Mr. Burns is when he is just like delighted yeah, by something yeah. so simple. He, he just seems so happy <laughs> yeah i love it uh so then homer is driving home and he oh, yeah and also when burns does get away yeah uh, there's another line i can relate to carl goes yeah we, we can go i can go back to my empty apartment <laughs> yeah. and it's so true because like i whenever i'm at work i just can't wait to get home and then yeah. i get home i'm just like well now what <laughs> okay, I, just like i'm too fried to do anything the the primary <laughs> reason i want to get home from work is so i can take my damn pants off <laughs> right as soon as you just, walk in uh, right? the second yeah, I'm just, i just yeah i'm just naked and hanging out and loving every but minute I hate of it is uh when I order food and like I have to like, I take my pants off and I put them back yeah. on like is it I feel like it should be okay to answer the door like they don't care it is isn't pornography there's, I don't there's understand no, why it's not okay no, in the real world my thing's not hanging out I mean and I'm even sh- if it was they've like, probably they've seen, they've it seen better penises they've seen better penises <laughs> but I, I feel like it should be socially acceptable to answer the door with in, you know it's, delivery <laughs> men we might answer the door <laughs> naked, and you just need to roll with it. Just deal with it. That's you just know, the thing that's going to happen nice from now tip. on. I leave like 20%. <laughs> just the tip is what I leave them. <laughs> if they're a sexy your, lady. Tip of your penis. That's right. Into the... Into the... Into their into female. whatever part. hole they offer me. <laughs> I'm not picky. <laughs> I'll take anything, please. <laughs> <laughs> he just let us put it in. <laughs> That's a bad <matter> where. <laughs> um, oh man! All right, let's get back on track here. So oh, yeah, yeah Homer, the fast food. 
Homer is driving home. Uh, he he wants to have. He's excited. That's pork chop night. Fried pork chop oh, night. He calls Marge, and Marge is like, "Oh, but you agreed today was going to be the first day of your new diet." Uh, and she has a funny line where she said, do you remember what Bart said? That NASA called and your gravity is affecting satellites. And Homer's like, well, that's a joke. And, he's, and she says, I like this. It comes from a true place. <laughs> that felt very Marge to me. It, it felt, and it, I like it, but it, felt, it, a good it line. actually I liked felt it. foreign to me because we watch all these crappy episodes and I'm yeah. so used to Homer being such an idiot where yeah. it was weird to see him be the grounded one in that conversation. You're absolutely right. I didn't it was even like, think about that. It was that. jarring. Yeah, you're right. But it's good. It was. it was a good jar. It was a good jar. It was like, like pickles. Like a, I was going to say like like jam. It was but like a jar of Vlasic pickles is what it was, Jack. Vlasic makes you makes turkey, turkey perky. perky. Wow, remember that? Deep cut. I don't even remember what it was. Did we just say that? I was think there we a just joke said involved? it. I don't remember. We just said it. We just said it. We do. We've done too many episodes. Are we just doing a tag too many to inside jokes. now? Yep. Like, uh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> oh, smash. I don't even remember what podcast that was on. I think it was this. It might have been this. We only we we only release two podcasts. We actually record about three dozen. Yeah, like anytime these, we make a joke, these are like, the best ones. Yeah, even though we, we like when we make a joke about the, our other podcasts, that, those are real. We do. Yeah, them. we do them. We just they haven't been released yet. Yeah, so. just 90s percentile. Anyway, uh, so Homer decides to have a big binge. He's going to eat a bunch of fast food before his diet starts. He drives to, I guess, fast food row or something like yeah. that. And we get our uh, – I lived There's on a- fast food road, by the way. Do you remember on Staten Island? Um, on my corner, I had White Castle, Taco Bell, oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Planet Wings, and a Greek place all on all four corners. Absolutely. It was, it's why I'm not healthy. It's why you're the man you are today. <laughs> Uh, I like there was a couple of funny restaurants. I remember like Dead Lobster, which was okay, but there was the one that I really liked. It was just a restaurant called We Have Restrooms with an exclamation point. I liked that a lot. Um, also, there was an eight second montage here. There was. It's, it's Hungry Like the Hungry Wolf. Like the Wolf. Duran Duran. Duran. Great song. Uh, and. Um, yeah, and it plays very quickly, and they 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 don't even like bother spending time with the song. It cuts like mid lyric, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and it's just Homer eating. There was not oh, many gags. He they, just eats a bunch of stuff. Like he puts a bunch gags. of stuff on a pizza, and then shakes up the box, and, and then, then just eats, eats the box. Yeah, it was okay. It was okay. It, you they know, shoot ch- chili in his face with a hose. Right. It was, it was at a place called Chili Blasters. I just too. don't like these montages unless they get you like you give me some time to to uh, get to know it. You know, it was, it was fine, but I think it was a, kind of a bit of a means justify the end joke because something happens we'll come back to yeah. it but homer it drives away and we get a real quick uh you know a, a reprisal of right. well, Hungry like I, the wolf. I want to talk about that so and we should set it up so basically homer wants to throw all the evidence out throw all the food out right he well throws- he f- first he finds that there's a drive-through garbage can which yeah. i guess he's never seen before yeah, and it was, he, uh, he decides to mouth, clean the yeah. entire car out so yeah. he throws out all of his fast Another food stuff. relatable thing how much shit yeah. can accumulate in the car absolutely um, yeah, and he throws it all out, and he throws out an old battery, and the acid an old car leaks battery. through and leaks into a gas pipe that's under the, the gar- garbage. Right. Uh, and then he smokes a jerk-ass cigar. It's You're say, right. It literally says Homer's jerk-ass jerk 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 cigars, Homer cigars. Which I don't like when they call him out being a jerk-ass, because it's not funny that he's a jerk-ass. <laughs> if you want to call it out, then have him not be a jerk-ass, and do a joke like, oh man, wasn't it, wasn't it crazy how for like 20 years we sucked, and Homer's a jerk-ass, <laughs> and we forgot how to write the show, and now Aww. we're good again? Like that would be great if in like that, season twenty. That's a good 20, joke. I would. I, they could do as many meta jokes as they want in season twenty eight if it's about how the last twenty seasons were terrible. <laughs> like if, if, if they can. But if, they were already doing those kinds of jokes in season eight, let alone twenty eight. What? That he was a jerkass? No, no. About I mean, how the, about the show is just you know going beyond its uh, no, I just, its lifespan. No, I, that, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I, I hate the fact that they keep making. No, I agree with you. It's like by saying, "Oh, look, we got jerkass." Jerkass jerk is not a good thing. It's it, our word for making fun of you. Simpsons. Yeah, exactly. It's like I don't know. It would be like. Um, I don't. I don't want to say Hitler. I don't know why I keep going to Hitler. <laughs> don't know either. <laughs> It'd be like Saddam Hussein. Like <laughs> not much better. <laughs> not much better than Hitler, Jack. It would be like Voldemort, okay, making jokes about like it's like, hey, isn't it like crazy how I uh, I, I I tried to ki- I killed Harry Potter's parents? Isn't that yeah, crazy? Right, right, like, right. Don't joke about that. It was a horrible event. <laughs> it was in a Harry's horrible life. time in You're our lives. You're an evil person. You yes. shouldn't revel in that. By the way, they- Jack, he should not be named. Please. Oh, I'm sorry, Voldemort. No, <laughs> I'm melting. <laughs> I'm Voldemort. Exactly. Apparently. So that's why he should never have been named. Because if you named him, you Dan Mohol would uh, yep. have melted. And, that, and that's I, a good reason. That's and, a good reason not to I name am. somebody. I have melted everyone. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're just a pile I'm of just goo. Pile. <laughs> I'm just goo now. <laughs> well, <laughs> goo pile. <laughs> you could do worse. 
<laughs> pile of air? <laughs> Do you still call it pile, an air pile? A pile of air is much worse than a pile of air. I guess. You just dissipate. I'm just dissipating. At least there, you, you know, we know where you stand. Yeah. You're that pile. Or where I sit. Yeah. Where you on a pile of goo. In a pile. I am the pile of goo. What's going on? <laughs> 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 What's going on? I don't know. <laughs> is, is this all cut? I don't know. What happened? Let's just end the episode here <laughs> as an homage to this episode. I feel like we've become what we hate. I feel like this is like season twenty-seven of of worst episode ever. Well, like what is none of this makes sense? None of this makes any sense. I don't know. Anyway. Some people, some people like this show. <laughs> I actually, this is a, a, an, a, an arrogant thing to say, but I like our show and I listen to it because I forget everything we said the second we stop recording. And I do listen. I, 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 I enjoy I, it. I can't. I don't listen to it because when I'm editing it, it's not. I just. Well, that's different because, yeah. yeah, you are listening to it then. But anyway. Um, so, yeah, Homer causes an explosion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he throws, he lights the cigar. He throws the match. The match goes into the gas pipe and the, right. the, the, the entire block blows up because the gas may explode. Uh, and now there's scenes of destruction of all these fast food restaurants exploding. Right, they're just this blowing is up. when hungry. So they just cuts to Homer oblivious driving right, away, driving away, smoking and a cigar. And you just hear hungry like a wolf blasting right, in for the like thing. two or three seconds in just, the car. Yeah, it's just like one second. And I think that was a missed opportunity. Like you say, it was funny and it just I, I laughed. The eight I liked month, it. Yeah, but it should have kept going. It should have. They could. How much funnier would it have been to see all these scenes of destruction, which were just like eh, whatever. <laughs> Too fast. hungry like the wolf. Yeah, so hungry like the wolf was playing. <laughs> while, and like there's another great joke where uh, a pizza place blows up. Right, and, and like. Like unmade pizzas, like the round things of dough, are falling on people's faces. Yes, and they're like, oh, this, this is great. great. And Hans Mole Man's there and he goes, Yo, oh, me too. And suddenly a big piece of cement debris crushes, yes, and, kills crushes him. and kills him. Like all of that would have been funnier, I think, if Hungry Like the to Wolf the tune was of playing. Hungry like the Wolf. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's just like, it would just, you know, it would just match the destruction. It would have just been f- the funny juxtaposition. I, I agree. It would have been good. Hungry Like the Wolf makes me think of destruction so um so we see that all of these fast food restaurants have been destroyed and it's interesting that homer has caused it and now he is the one at the town meeting who is rallying the troops of the town to rebuild, rebuild all it, yeah. of the fast food restaurants i thought they might do something with that they did not uh but we see a couple of mascots for different uh yeah. fast food places did this do much for you there was no. like mcribbit i saw yeah he was, that was cute um, um no there, there's some jokes about mayor McCheesy. cheesy, cheesy cr- mcmayor Jack. cheesy mcmayor he's crying yeah, uh, it was whatever. Yeah, I thought I was in. I think this was one of the few times we've ever seen uh, the May- Mayor Quimby interact with the Mayor McGee's or Cheesy McMayor. Yeah, I feel like there could have been. My some God, kind of, world's colliding. Yeah, I feel like there could have been some kind of mayor joke there, but I don't know what. I don't know. Just be like, you are a mayor. I'm also a mayor. Yeah, that's yeah, it. That's, that's, a, that's the joke. I needed. <laughs> that's a joke, right? That's that's funny. Yeah, it's better than what we've been watching. <laughs> uh, yeah. So they, for whatever reason, they decide to bump up the primary so that they are the first primary. Uh, in the nation for the president. Right. This I, is 2008, remember. This is right... This yes. actually... if You said it aired January 2008. So this Correct. actually aired during uh, the, the primary season for both the Democrats and the Republicans. Yes. One of the, it's a very rare time in... Uh, um, not rare, but it, it, it's... Uh, you, unless a president wins two terms, you yeah. don't usually have a Democratic and a Republican primary happening at the same time. Right, right, right. We, we have in the last every eight years because we've been having a bunch because of we have two-term term presidents, yeah. presidents in a while. But yes. yeah, so this this was relevant. It was. And um, how it didn't make much sense in context of the episode. I don't understand how moving their primaries forward gives them money to buy fast food I, things. I feel like we must there's, have missed some. There's talk of bond issues. And yeah. there's a bit, a bit of a blurb like explaining bond issues. Yeah, it was a little too preachy. It was basically like Bart's like, yeah, we'll just pass the problem to our kids. And, exactly. And then well, Maggie can pass it to them. And Maggie looks and there's an empty chair next right, to her. Right, and she's just like harumph. That was like a... A, a, a cute visual because it was Bart to Lisa to Maggie to an empty chair. That was yeah. a good visual language, a good way to show that there's nobody to pass it on to. But, exactly, it's but just whatever. a cycle, and preachy. And, yeah. Uh, um, so they cut, we got cut to New Hampshire, right? And we're at the Live Free or Diner. That's fine. which I thought was I like cute. That. I like that. That's a cl- great Simpsons. Would not name. be surprised if there's an actual diner by that name oh, in New yeah, Hampshire. Sure, yeah. There's a Die Hard movie called Live Free or Die Hard. There sure is, and they filmed it all in New Hampshire. <laughs> Did they? Nope. I don't know why. I don't know why. Why would you believe me? <laughs> they did, didn't they? <laughs> they certainly did. Uh, is, isn't Die this, Hampshire, isn't they this Die it. Hard 4 trivia podcast? Yeah, it certainly is. <laughs> Who played the wizard? Was that his name? Uh, it was Kevin Smith's Kevin character. Smith, that's weird. That, was, that, came up, that actually came up yesterday. What was Kevin Smith's name in Die Hard 4? In a really? Co- in a conversation I had with a friend. Yeah. That's so weird. It wasn't me. 
No, it wasn't you. Why are you having conversations without me, Jack? I thought we were agreed we would record all of our conversations <laughs> and release them as various podcasts. I just wanted to point out that I actually have six different Die Hard 4 trivia podcasts. <laughs> I only do four of them with you. You're right. There's um, one I, I also do for Telemundo. It's in Spanish. Of course. And then there's this other one with my friend that I did last night. Yes. Okay. I'm trying to. I'm trying to translate "Die Hard" into Spanish. It would be uh, "Morte Mar- 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 Hardo." Marte Aduro is, is, is hard. Well, whatever. This Doesn't is matter. delete this. Um, what do you think of the New Hampshire couple? The, the, you know, the classic uh, talk like this, don't you know? And, eh, it, was, uh, it was fine. Can't get that you know, from here. The stereotypical New England like yeah. accent. It was whatever. The, the first joke was uh, they, Dan Rather is as himself is asking him a question, and he yes. just answers in a bunch of New like, Hampshire oh, yeah, and New oh. Hampshireisms. Yeah, he doesn't actually say anything. Right. Yeah, it, was what, it was what it was. What did you think of? Uh, so they all find out that the primary is in Springfield. Dan Rather and everybody hightails right. the, it out the of there. The new first primary is now Springfield, yeah. so they all leave New Hampshire. So now it's just the New Hampshire couple, and they lock the door and rob the place. I actually and, really like that. Did eh, you not like that? I liked it. I just felt like, eh, why? Why, why is this here? No reason. Weird. It's just like the joke is. Isn't it funny? They have funny accents and. Yeah, uh, George and well, Martha. And, you wouldn't expect this old right. couple to be robbing this diner, yeah. but they were, and Dan Rather was the only thing that was keeping it. them away. Just, they, didn't do much for me. Yeah, but I liked Dan it. Rather, um, not the best voice acting, not the was, best delivery. I thought but he was pretty he good, was actually. Fine. I was wondering, no was Yao this Ming, before, that's for he, sure. before his big scandal where it like, kind of ruined his career and, and, and tainted him? I'd and rather Mustard. not talk about it. I know you're very close to Dan. <laughs> you're in the Dan Club. Most people don't know that everyone who has the same first name are best friends. Yeah, that's that's why I host trivia with Dan Ozzy. And that's why I hang out with Jack Nicholson, that's Jack right. White, Jack Black, and Jack the Ripper's Ghost. Yeah. The five of us go out. And... All right, Jack, here I am. It's Jack the <laughs> Ripper's the Ghost. Oh, I, thought I... I thought that was your Jack White impression. Yeah, oh, this is, oh, this is Jack White here. <laughs> did you fall in love with a girl? Yeah, oh, I did. <laughs> Fell in love once. It is worth repeating that. <laughs> I'll see myself out there. Bus stops on your left. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, oh, so then it, uh, so now that it's in Springfield, all the media runs, media rushes there, and right. we, we go, we get a CGI like thirty second. Um, yeah, it's a spoof of those opening logos that the 24-hour news cycles usually have where you know where so in this case it would be about the primary yeah uh, and it's just this uh, was like a bald I eagle coming the, in i can't think of the, the industry interstitial term for it. maybe yeah anyway it, it was the eagle coming in he signs in to vote and he votes and, and he right, flies at the, at the camera voted. uh colbert does these about or did them at the time colbert mm-hmm. report did a much better i feel like this was a lot of effort for nothing because it didn't well, make me laugh it wasn't really also, funny yeah i mean the, it he, looked cool he, I thought si- it looked cool. he signs a thing that says eagle comma ball i guess that's a joke okay um but yeah and even the eagle flying at the camera that's very colbert it's literally yeah. it's literally how that's, the colbert yeah, report how opened. opened so i don't know i just felt it was unnecessary yeah make it I, funny I, I thought it was like the Colbert ones are over the top, cool. and that's what's funny about them. Yeah, right, the I best Colbert cool. one ever was uh, one about Easter, and it was uh, oh, it was the war on Easter instead of the war on Christmas. Oh yeah, I remember that one. And it was one. Jesus having a shootout from the tomb, <laughs> right? Like the, he, he, <laughs> risen, he rises and he's shooting and using the tomb for cover. Yeah, like the, do something like that. Do that. Just have Jesus in there. Just that's just what we're looking Jesus for. In there. Jesus and a gun. So um, the media has descended upon Springfield. We see a very quick moment where Kent Brockman, I think, interviews Mo and asks, uh, "Are you a registered uh, voter?" Well, first he says. Do you have a preference? And he goes, "I like girls." Fruit Loop, oh, which yeah. not a very homophobia, sensitive. Uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks for having homophobia in your politics episode. And then Brockman says, "Are you a registered voter?" And Mo goes, "I'm a registered something." Ooh. Implying registered sex registered offender. Sex offender. Wait, please stop making Mo a racist. Uh, you know, not it's a interesting. Racist, a rapist. A rapist. Well, don't make him a racist either. Don't, he's a racist rapist. <laughs> um, it's inter- It's a funny. That's a funny line. Yeah, I just don't like something. it. With Mo yeah. and then like I don't I just don't want it in the I don't, Simpsons. I won't want Mo. I like when Mo says, "Oh, the rats are are in here. Tuck your pants into your socks." Right. That's a funny, creepy, Mo, sleazy Mo. Mo's line. like a lovable scumball. Yeah. yeah. Don't, like not uh, when he's a registered sex offender. Yeah. He's not that means much lovable. He either assaulted a woman, right, or, or flashed or a woman, he, or he had sex with a child. Those. Are, it's probably one of those two things, or, and neither or, of those are good options. Or he's got his, you know, he's hanging brain outside. <laughs> Is that a phrase, hanging brain? Yeah, it is. All right. Hanging some brain, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> Can we name this episode Hanging Brain? <laughs> we shouldn't. <laughs> Let's do it. Hanging Brain with Mr. Cooper. Yeah, Let's sure move it, on. It'll help our SEO. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure it would. Um, oh, so, so uh, there was another Marge line I liked where uh, Homer goes, uh, 
primary fever, Marge. Catch it. And, and Marge goes, you said the same thing about yellow fever, and that was terrible. <laughs> that <laughs> I missed that line. line. That was, yeah. That's a funny line. I like. I think it was the same scene where Homer thinks about uh, lending policies or something like that, and he has a fantasy, and it's accurate. No, no, they go, uh, it's like some sort of think tank. Yeah, uh, right, and he, right. And he goes, think tank, eh? And it goes to a thought bubble of him imagining what a think tank would be right, like. Right, and they're discussing lending and policies it's an actual and stuff. Think and he's tank, like, what, yeah. I can't get one right? Yeah, that I was, actually like that. That was funny. That was, that was, was cute. You know why it worked? Because the delivery, the voice acting, and the execution of the actual realistic thing yeah, tank it was, was all done very, very straight. Well. Yeah, it was done very well. Yeah, I like that. They didn't goof it up. Uh, looks like everyone's gone but the cashier. Time to make our move. Nice didn't on these masks, Martha. Now that you've said my name, I have to kill him. Then we get Dan Rather's gone. By the way, he yeah, was in that I one scene. He, I thought he was going to be a regular. I did too, for the episode. and I also thought this gentleman was going to be Mr. John Stewart. Makes an appearance. Yeah, he has an extended scene with Krusty. Definitely extended because it went on this for a very long time. Probably the longest scene in the episode. Uh, it and probably it, was, and it was all in service of pretty much one joke. Well, there was At one for, piece uh, yeah. that I like where he, John Stewart says. Um, it was, uh, oh, Krusty, uh, you bailed on that thing for charity. And he was like, oh, I'm not that close. And he's like, well, the Krusty's kids sure missed you. Yeah, and I yeah. love that bailed joke. On his own he charity. bails on his own charity. He's yeah. not even that John close. John Stewart's deliveries, for the most part, were pretty good. There was a couple lines that were really funny. Um, oh, he, he makes himself nervous or something. What, what's he say? Uh, oh, he, he's uh, getting ready on camera. And he's like, ah, don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. Oh, I made myself nervous. Yeah, something that was like a good that. delivery. Yeah, I, I like all, that. The other deliveries were fine. Uh, he did all right. I'm not a huge John Stewart fan, to be honest. I, I like John Stewart. I, I was never the biggest Daily Show guy, but I, I like him. I say I, I'm almost the opposite in that. Oh, really? I don't watch a Daily. I never really watch a Daily Show, but I just didn't. Uh, his comedic timing never really got like. I just felt, always felt like he was off. I like I, him I from know. Big Daddy and from Jane yeah, Silent Bob I, I Strike like him Back. as a person, but it is something about and the way depth he. To I feel like he, the way he delivers jokes. I don't know. I just I, anyway, I never liked him, um, but I, I thought he did a, a good job here. He did. He did a very yeah. good job. And then he starts saying a joke, and and Krusty starts writing it down. Right. He's there's something like ah, there's more hot here there. There's more hot air here than on. And Krusty's like what? Then on what? And Krusty's yeah. furiously writing it down, and it becomes this yeah. whole thing where he's trying to steal. John Basically, Stewart's the, zingers. That's the one joke is he's right. writing it down and Stewart could have just been like, what are you writing my joke? Are you stealing my joke? Yeah, but then it, it just, just keeps going. It's a scene. It's a yeah. scene. And it's the only John Stewart scene. And it has nothing Stewart to do scene. with the episode. I like the idea of John Stewart and Krusty playing off each other because they're yeah. both media personalities and yeah. John Stewart was a stand-up and there was an episode where Krusty was a stand-up. I was even wondering if he was in that episode because I, I haven't seen it. I don't think that he was. I, I guess probably not. But he's of that ilk You're thinking of, of Janine, Janine Garofalo. Garofalo. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just went on a long, long time, and I don't think Why? we... It was diminishing returns yeah. for the entire time. It's just you, all for the service of one joke, at least if the jokes are building on top. It was just the same joke over and over. It was around this part of the episode that I was wondering where we were going, because it was just this whole act, the whole second act here, is just the media in Springfield, yeah. and like, what's that like? Yeah. Without really a central through line? I thought that was going to be the episode. The Ralph thing, I thought, was more Ralph thing comes of an out afterthought. Yeah, yeah. But, it, but, it, but no, they drop all that. Well, well, I mean, it's still about the media, his portrayal of Ralph. It's it's still tied in there. Right. It's, um, but the Ralph does. thing obviously overshadows it. But there's no, like, if you're looking at this from a storytelling perspective, there's not really a protagonist in yeah. this episode. There's no real also, conflict. there's something to say about the way the media handles politics, but compare this to uh, Homer Badman, which was mm -hmm. very much about the media and, and scandal stories and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, when Homer gets caught, they, you know, Homer's considered a, a sex offender with a babysitter and the media blows it away out of proportion and makes shit up and, you know, they have the thermal camera on him. Yes. Uh, all that stuff was spot on and, and perfect, really. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best episodes they've ever done. I agree with you. And you could have done a different angle with the media because politics is much different from that kind of scandal. Right. But it, you can they, just they see don't. the difference. It's just, yeah, it's, I, well, it's superficial there's a scene where they um homer and lenny and carl are in a political ad uh focus group where yeah. they want their honest opinions and there's an okay joke where lenny and carl are like that bl blouse makes you look fat and like they're just offering up yeah. honest and hurtful opinions which was whatever yeah also they use a terrorist uh in the that's what i was going to talk about but it's not osama bin laden it's a made-up terrorist it's pretty right. much the cosmic wars maple of osama <laughs> bin laden just say osama bin laden you're yes, still alive at the time it was just say Bin Laden. It's not offensive. Was he? Oh, yeah, I think he, yeah, I guess he, he was. was. This was around, it was right before. Yeah, Obama um, personally shot him in the eye. And yeah. Obama was not elected yet. You're goddamn time. right. <laughs> um, but the, the they show a political ad for this guy. I don't remember who it was. And it was like, he was featured in Time Magazine with this fictional terrorist. 
when they say that like goes with like or something like that and then alludes that they're in cahoots because yeah. they're in the same they're issue the of a magazine. Yeah. I love that. That's great. And then Be- it comes up with um, uh, a milkshake appears and yeah. with two straws into their mouth yeah. and it plays the theme from I, a summer place. <laughs> it was a little obvious with the milkshake and everything. I, I, I feel like they could have dialed it down a bit. I love the idea of that. That's a great negative ad and that they're yes. using something something ridiculous. I thought that was good. It was a great, um, you know, a bit, great bit of satire about yeah. those ads. But what I loved about it is right afterwards, Homer just wants a milkshake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the only effect it had exactly. on him. Uh, so I like that. Yeah, I, I, w- I just wish there was more. Th- that's what this episode was like. It should have been all satire. And I guess that's what they're saying. I guess it with kind Ralph of Wiggum, was trying yeah, to be that. But it wasn't. I think Again, that- Homer Badman, the, the portrayal of the meteor, that was satire. Right. This was, no, this was just superficial jokes. Yeah, I don't know. Some satire came through, but... I have I wrote down Senator Weiner girl and I remember the yeah, scene but not really funny. enough to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, no, so. they call him they call him uh, Ween, they call him uh, Winner. It was like Winner girl. girl. Winner Winner girl. The joke the, the joke is they were mispronouncing his name and it would actually sounded better. Usually it's the other way around. Right. And, yeah. But and also I, th- I believe he was a Democrat and Lisa had just said something about how oh we need we don't need another brainy intellectual we need someone to get things done and then it turns out he's Weiner girl. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, take that Democrats. Take oh it. man, there was also. Uh, Bill Clinton is on the campaign trail. Yep. Very reminiscent of, uh, yes. of, of, of late. Very ahead of its time um, episode. I mean, he's, well, all, he's, still doing, his, time, he's but doing the same thing he had in yeah. 2008. And if she loses to Sanders, which she won't, but it, 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 he'll it, do it, again. It, it would be great if, if she if she did. And then uh, that way she could just run again yeah. as like the presumed front runner in eight more years and then somehow <laughs> lose again. I mean, it would yeah. be terrible, but it would be funny. Poor Hillary. <laughs> but um, yeah, so there's a joke where Clinton's on the phone with her. And it was the joke was... Uh, Hillary Clinton is a sh- sh- screaming harpy. She's queen of the harpies. See, here's I, your crown, your majesty. I kind of liked it. I don't Be- like. I, don't I, I like agree. The, I don't is, like Hillary that jokes like that. Reductive kind of Hillary's just haranguing Bill joke. Uh. But the way that Bill Clinton's always been portrayed on this show has always been like he's kind of a sitcom dad I know, type thing. I know, but just so it, it, I, I don't know. I laughed at I, it. I just feel like they should avoid any it, jokes making women, you know, strong, powerful women out as uh, like. Har- Harpies. I just I I agree with you. I agree with you. Even even if you have to sacrifice a decent joke for it, it's the better thing to do. I think what what we we, we've had plenty of that. We don't need more. What could have made it better is if we didn't actually hear Hillary. Like we hear her a little through the phone. You don't hear the words, but it's like yeah, no, like the stereotypical nagging voice. I just want to hear Clinton being like, oh, yeah, exactly. Just make the joke about Clinton. That's all. Make it that he's lazy, not that Hillary's a bully. That would have been fine. That would have been fine. Yep. There was also since we were saying low blows. Uh, they make a joke about Dennis Kucinich, who was a, a candidate yeah. in 2008, and basically the joke was, he's short. Right. It's not and satire. They, like, turn around, he's he's basically yeah. a little person, yeah. and uh, he's just like, hey, so in I'm real not life, that small. He's pro- he, in real life, he's, he's quote-unquote short. He's probably, like, five foot something. Yeah. So now you make him a two foot tall, less than midget? Like, Yeah, it's, he, like, it's like that George Lucas thing. They yeah, did the exactly. same thing in that Cosmic That's Wars funny. episode. That's no. not funny. Like, uh, you know what was funny? Fred Thompson. Fred Thompson, <laughs> when he goes, but I was in Die Hard. Why are we talking about Die Hard so much this episode? It's <laughs> a great movie. Great yeah, series. Right, you're right. And he, he, he and Homer goes, well, Die Hard 2, which is a great movie. But, hey, look. Um, all right, rank the Die Hards. Let's do it. Because we're right. bored talking about this episode. All right, well, this is going to be pretty nope. controversial. Number one is Die Hard. No. You're this is, full of shit. Yeah, you no. like Die Hard with a Vengeance better. No, Die Hard 5. No. Oh, of course. <laughs> no, yeah, I like Die Hard with a Vengeance better. Die Hard is probably the better movie, yes. Die Hard with a Vengeance is just... Like just so much more fun to watch. I mean, that's, I that's think, my number two. I would obviously. say Die Hard is a close second, but I like Die Hard with the Vengeance more. I just think Die Hard is such it's a more perfect quotable. Movie. I mean, and, and again, it's a close second. Die Hard, Die Hard has Alan Rickman. It's also yep. very quotable. Yep. Uh, I just something about Die Hard with the Vengeance. Maybe because I'm from New York. I don't know. Yep. I, I love that movie. And then are we, are we both saying that two is the third best, or do you like? Yeah, the, no, two is the third best by far. Four, yeah. I hated when I saw it. I I've only seen it once. I, I only so saw it the one time with it's you. It's my default fourth. But. And after, I've never saw the fifth after one. Ha- seeing how terrible the fifth one, I th- you had more respect for the fourth one because at least it had some substance. Right, it wasn't a great movie, but it was something to it. Whereas the fifth one is literally just at least you action. had Timothy Oliphant. The fifth and one he was just he was fun. Yeah, the fifth one's just like shootout, car chase, shootout, car chase. There was yeah. nothing to it. I didn't see it. I probably never will. Um, but uh, like Die Hard three, I, like I've spent hours um, with friends doing the five gallon, three gallon thing. Like I that. was doing it. Not was yeah. it doing it with you? No, not long ago. No. Because every I time t- I figure it out, I forget, and then I got to refigure it out. Okay, but so uh, you par yeah. the five, you fill the five. You don't want to get into it. You empty it into the three, so you have two, and then yeah. you do something else with yeah. that. Anyway, it just seems to be more fun than the first one. The first one's a great movie, but the yeah. third one is the third one's goofier. 
And I think that's why I like it. It's I think I like I think it's the like they get each one gets goofier than the last, and I think the third yeah. one is just the, the third right one's amount. peak goofy. Yeah, you and can't. Get while worse you were talking, that. I solved the the five and three Good. gallon I'm problem, gl- so I know the did. answer. I'm glad you did. So it, we'll move on. I won't. To, I won't tell anyone. It has to do with pouring the five into the into the. It, 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 All right, you fill the it. five, you pour it into the three. Now you have two in the five. Right. You empty the three. You right. put the two, two in the three. In three. Now you, you fill the, the five, five. You empty pour that one in, into the three. Only and one you... gallon comes out. You yep. have four. Yep. There we go. Yeah. We did it. Come at us, Simon. Also, a uh, friend of the show, Jeff, always had a problem with this, the tough-talking street kid because his one-liner was uh, didn't seem apropos of, of an 11-year-old street kid. But yeah. he, goes, uh, he goes, there's no cops anywhere. This is like Christmas. You could steal City Hall. <laughs> and it's just yeah. like, well, an 11-year-old kid, why would he want to steal City Hall? I want to steal City Hall. <laughs> He was, like, he was that, a 1920s meta- newsie. That metaphor is just a little bit above his uh, a pay grade. Bit, a little bit. <laughs> anyway. Uh, anyway, Fred the, the Thompson. Cushion, yeah, yeah we the like Fred that. Thompson line was funny. And, it, and to be honest, when he was running, that was like the... I Even when he was on Law & Order or whatever, I was just always like, yeah, that's the guy from Die Hard. Yeah, right. And now he's dead. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Uh, and then it's, I guess it was just that everybody wanted all of the politicos and all the, the media to leave. So Homer is at a, a meeting, I guess, at Moe's, and they say we should just vote for the most ridiculous candidate. Yeah. And they to pick get Ralph. Them to leave. I don't know why Homer picks Ralph. I don't know, I don't know how either. many interactions Homer and Ralph have together. I, very few. Again, this is why it feels more like a gimmick than a real episode. Because Ralph's right. the obvious choice for the Simpsons. In writers. our universe. Yes. Yes. In the Simpsons it universe. Make, the Homer, he's it not. makes no sense for Homer no, to pick him. Not at all. But, yeah. At least if you had some like Wiggum does something that gets the attention, yeah. Like if you are making it a story, you know, like there's that episode we covered way back when where uh, Bart, through a series of unfortunate events, accidentally moons the flag, and then that yes. makes him a pariah. Right. So something like that where Wiggum gets into some kind of situation, especially with cameras everywhere, where right. now he now he's in the news, and now like oh why don't we make him the candidate? Whereas literally it's just Homer at it. Ralph is not hasn't been in the episode at all. No. Homer just goes ah, how about Ralph. Yeah, that, I, that's literally the writers doing it. It's like, eh, yeah, Ralph. Yeah, yeah. So they do that. Ralph Wiggum is suddenly the the primary winner in yeah. Springfield. He had not been in the episode up at until all, this point at all. at all. I do, and to the show's credit, I, I think they do a good job of uh, using Ralph isms uh, for his policies. So they it's did. Like, it's yeah. like his policy on immigration, and he goes stranger, stranger danger. danger. That's funny. That's yeah, a funny. I like that. And like uh, they, they, his uh, economic policy, he's talking about how much money he has. Right. His piggy bank. Mm-hmm. Like that was I, that works, but it works. It, it doesn't have any context. It doesn't fit in the episode. No, definitely but, not. But that does work. Yeah, I, I like that. Um, just a really quick thing, a Marge thing that I liked. I just love Marge. She's great. Uh, where they're like, I think Lisa was watching TV and saw that Ralph won, and she was like, this is a disaster. And Marge goes, you think that's a disaster? Look at this. <laughs> Springfield Dodge has too much inventory. <laughs> it's it's really random. It was really <laughs> random, but I just loved the idea of Marge just thinking that that's a disaster. I don't know. I felt like that was one too many on top of the uh, her believing the gravity I, I NASA guess. thing and the yellow well, Marge, why, why would she inject herself with the yellow fever. Marge didn't come off too great in this episode, <laughs> but I just loved that delivery and the line. It yeah. was funny. I also liked Homer and Bart come in and they're like, they have Ralph Wiggum uh, campaign shirts on and they're like, I dig the wig. And I was like, oh, that's, that's a, a clever little, little, little oh, little that's catchphrase. why they kept saying dig the wig. I thought yeah. they were t- referencing the, the, wig, the wig party. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought was, I thought there was some weird... Ralph Wiggum could be in the wig yeah. party. Yeah. So it's just... Or not. He could be. No, it, <laughs> yeah. it, it, I'm surprised they didn't make any connection to the wig party. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you don't think that's a ripe uh, I, I fruit to be picked? Right. <laughs> I, th- I think it's been too long. I think they, the wigs need to be taken they out. They need of to pack. avoid that low hanging fruit of the wig party. <laughs> But yes, then there is a line. Uh, I don't remember how it comes up. The Constitution thing. Yeah, they. they, uh, they oh, Lisa oh, says he yeah. can't. He's not constitutionally Ralph's eight, eligible. You have yeah. to be thirty-five. And uh, Bart says, "Patriarch killed the Constitution," and it was right. very preachy and just like direct. Like it was it, just like, "Hey, the Patriot Act sucks." I mean, the Patriot Act ruined our freedoms. And- it was. I, I hated it. It was on the nose, yeah, preachy And then Homer's crap. like, I don't know. Who cares if they're reading my library card? But then that part books. was a little weird because it seemed pro-Patriot Act. And yeah, the fact that, that it's on Fox. I was thinking that, too. Because Homer said... Of, because Homer is subscribing to uh, the... It's like, uh, yeah, who cares? I don't need to keep yeah. secret my yeah, library I, books. I, they can monitor my phone calls. I'm not a terrorist. Right. You know, that, that idea. And that seems... I, I, you're, that, that was a fine stance for Homer to take. It seemed an odd stance for the episode to take. Yeah, especially because, because the, you, you, generally they're pretty left-leaning in the Simpsons writers' like room. It seemed like Bart's comment about the Patriot Act, even though he didn't seem... 
he seemed uh, okay with it. It was, right. seemed to be the writer saying, hey, the dig. Patriot Act is, yeah, yep. it was a dig at the Patriot Act. Yeah. And then you're right to follow it up immediately with something that sort of supports it. Um, it was, it was I, I was just like yeah. left being That's like, wait, weird. what? Do That's we weird. not like the Patriot Act or do yeah. we actually do like it? But politics aside, it was just so preachy and forced in and, and shoehorned in, yeah. pop, pop, pop. It was popping all over the place. Um, but speaking of politics, we see the Springfield Republican yeah, headquarters. Always, always welcome to see Makes them. An appearance. They, but again, uh, the, the George W. Bush jokes were shoehorned in and just like, they were, they just were. like hey, uh, he's a bad president. Uh, we're just uh, preaching at you. And I thought it was interesting that they brought Birch Barlow back. He yeah. was there. He was named as yeah. Birch Barlow. Yeah. It was, um, I mean, it was interesting. It was interesting. Fat Tony, I don't remember seeing him in the Republican uh, oh, was committees he there? before. I, didn't see yeah. him there. I would think, if anything, the mob would be Democrats. One thing, yeah, maybe. One thing that I didn't like about the Republican scene was, um, you know, back, I guess it was uh, Sideshow Bob Roberts in season five was the first time we Six, saw right? them. Five is Kid Fear. Uh, oh, you're right. Okay. Oh, I finally got one on you. Yeah. Uh, all right. Mm, fucking brag about it. Why don't you? <laughs> why don't you go watch Die Hard with a Vengeance? Maybe, maybe, I'll, uh, maybe I should host trivia. Maybe I should be doing yeah, well, well, we'll see. We'll see. We won't see. Um,. <laughs> <laughs> when they first introduced the Republican uh, Party in Springfield, there was a Dracula. And I always yeah. thought that was such a great gag. Yeah, it's weird. In this episode, he talks, and that makes it a little too yeah. much. Yeah, he also makes a bat pun. Yeah. Oh, what did he say? I don't He's remember. Like, you have too many bats in the belfry. Blah. Right. Something like yes. that. Yes. Anyone's care for it. <laughs> is, that, is that old Dracula fingers? Yes. <laughs> I'm here to comment on all the Draculas. <laughs> did you like it? I don't know why I do this thing with my fingers. <laughs> it's not a visual podcast. podcast. Yeah, there was no cameras around. No, I mean, I, you know, it was just, it, it would have been great if he was still a background yeah, gag. Yeah, it was like, too much. It was it's too much. much to have actual Dracula yeah. there. <laughs> actual like, Dracula. <laughs> Maybe we we can have fictional Dracula, but don't put actual Dracula. Yeah, no, you're 100 percent right. He's been through enough. It's it's a little too much. I, for the first time, I think ever, we see the Democratic uh, Party headquarters. Yes, which is in and a salad bar because Democrats are hippies. They love their was, salad. So this coming right after the Patriot Act thing really made me wonder, like, what are we saying? Are they just trying to be even-handed? Or I think they were trying to be even-handed. So, they but, are not kind to the Democratic Party because, as yeah, you said, they, they meet in a salad they use bar a huge and like a gay whole food stereotype. Type thing. It's basically Hank Azaria's character from The Birdcage. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I can say about it, because it is kind of a, it seems like a very one-dimensional, shitty gay stereotype, is yeah. that he is a char- recurring character in the show. He's oh, from, that exact guy? Yeah, he's from oh. Three Gays of the Condor. Uh, oh. And he's been in he's been a few episodes we've seen on this podcast. He was uh, okay. in the gay marriage one. Uh, so he's... I, He's not one-dimensional, so it's not like they just put in random gay stereotype. They put right. in their gayest character. Okay. But it still seemed a little... Well, like, I, I didn't know that, and to me it just yeah. seemed like the Democratic Party is a gay, a flamboyantly yeah. gay guy, a bunch of women, and Mayor Cornyn. Ariana Kirby. Huffington. And, right, Ariana Huffington I mean, was there. Look, I guess if... The or Republic. Ariana Muffington, whatever they name her <laughs> in this in this Maple world. Um, I mean, look, if a Republican Party has uh, has has actual Dracula, Dracula, has actual Dracula, then all right, I, I, I guess can't it really. Po- but it did seem weird. It did, yeah. I, 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 didn't I, love I it. guess, they're, but it is even handed. You're right. If they got actual Dracula, I guess the Democrats can have uh, you know one dimensional can have yeah one dimensional gay guy, actual gay, actual gay. <laughs> <laughs> is that the name of the episode? <laughs> nope. No. <laughs> We can't hang brain. <laughs> actual be- gay drug. <laughs> Hanging brain with the actual gay. That's the. I not like actual na- gay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't call the episode actual gay. What does it mean? I don't know. That's why it's interesting. People go. I guess. People go. Oh, what's this about? I gay- think we, we should go with fake our, gays, actual gays. Our original suggestion, Mr. Reinhold's courtroom. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> cha, with <Jay> Reinhold. <laughs> Uh, what the what the what did you think of this Elmo thing? They ask uh, they ask him if he likes donkeys or elephants, and he says he likes Elmo. He says he likes Elmo, and uh, I don't remember if it was Brockman was like, oh, you mean Elmo so and so who worked Nick, for Nick for yeah, Nixon, so, so he's a Republican. Republican. And then Lou is like, no, he means Elmo somewhere else who was a, was Democrat, a Democrat and yeah. ran on a Democrat. And was like, no, you're thinking of that this Elmo. And yeah, I mean, it was I just I just sat there watching, just like <sighs> it's it's weird because that's the kind of. Uh, offhand, highbrow type joke that I usually like. Yeah, the show usually does very well, but but it's something about it just didn't work for me. Maybe yeah, it was too much. I, I just uh, maybe it's in the delivery. It just seemed. Uh, you know what? I bet you it's, it's it's a it's a big picture thing. I bet you because this 
entire episode was like last week, very hollow. Also, yeah. also like Kevin Bacon. Yep. Very hollow. Sorry, Kevin Bacon. Uh, so we may- got your emails. We're sorry we called you hollow, man. <laughs> so maybe there was nothing to anchor that that scene in, and that's why. Yeah, I mean, maybe in a better episode, that type of gag would have worked for me. It's just at this point. I didn't realize how far into the episode we were, (laughs) and then this is coming, like, there were two minutes left in the episode at this point, and I had no idea what this episode was trying to say, what is it about, what is the story? The closest thing to the story is the next scene, is the climax, I guess, where uh, the... the Oh, you mean when Ralph Wiggum says he's going to make America great again? (laughs) That, yeah. Uh, And, uh, no, it's the Republican representative, which is Birch. And the yeah. Democrat uh, representative, which is, uh, what are we calling her? Mariana Mariana Muffington. Muffington. <laughs> uh, so the two of them sneak into Ralph's house and, like, you have to pick a side. Right. Um, I did like, join the Democrats. We have Alec Baldwin. Oh, right. The Republicans have Stephen Baldwin. They <laughs> yeah. might as well not even have a Baldwin. That was a good that, line. That's I did a like that. a funny line, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Lisa comes in for whatever reason. Lisa yeah. just feels uh, the need to insert herself. This could have been a good, I keep saying it's this, a gimmick. It really could have been a good episode. If, if from, from the get-go, you know, besides maybe a non-sequitur or two, uh, you Get, have okay. Ralph. You have a B about Ralph. From- Shorten the beginning. The yeah. beginning was way too long. Right. Like it starts off, Homer like blows up the crusty burger and that causes all the damage. Fine. You want to do yeah. that? Fine. No. Get rid of all the work stuff at the beginning because yeah. we liked it, but it made yeah. no sense with right. the rest right. of the episode. Ralph needs to be in it early. And tie Ralph in. Put him at the, the town hall meeting yeah. somehow. And yeah. maybe he says something funny and everyone yeah. laughs and yeah. like we're establishing we that the st- town likes need- Ralph. And besides like the Elmo line and stuff, which again was a minute of Lou and Wiggum and Kent Brockman talking, yeah. we needed more Ralph time. We needed more time with Ralph. You're right. This that- is an episode of Ralph Wiggum runs, runs for president and he's barely in the episode. This is really, besides the campaign ads, this is the one scene he has where he actually interacts with people and yeah. interacts with Lisa. It almost seems like this whole episode was just a build-up to get to the campaign ad that and ends the episode. Again, this should have been a viral video, yeah. a YouTube video, and or Butterfinger commercial. Yeah. Let's get some <laughs> juicy Butterfingers. <laughs> I, I mean, voting makes me want a Butterfinger. I, nobody lay, better lay a finger <laughs> on my Butterfinger. <laughs> Butterfinger does That's not sponsor they, this podcast. I mean, it's, it's people like you who don't like to vote. And, and people like you <laughs> who don't like to vote. You know, you, you undemocratic monsters, <laughs> you ghouls. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't call me a ghoul just because I, of my horrible spine. <laughs> Cross po- podcast reference. Um, was it? <laughs> was no, it? Was I don't, it? I don't know. No, that was in this one. Okay. Um, they, I don't know anymore. <laughs> no, uh, if they, if they want to get the youth and they want to get more people to vote, instead of giving out buttons that say, I voted so we can be arrogant yeah. about it and rub it in in people like you's face. Give me a fucking Give butter me a finger, fucking bro. Butterfinger. I Hook think the country could afford 300 million butterfingers. Not even I 300 think so. million. Whatever, however many people are eligible to vote. Yeah. Uh, just take them. Just, just take them from Nestle. I guarantee you more people would vote if you got a... Like, and I'm not talking bite size. I'm talking like a full bar. Oh, you're talking... Oh, full bar. Not, not king size. Just a, like, a, like a standard like finger. I gotta. I, this is this is this is not great about me as a person. But if I did get a full size candy bar after voting, you vote. I would absolutely. And vote. you are one of the and most I don't even adamant. Like, I don't even like you candy. Are, all you that are much. one of the most adamant non voters I know. Yeah. I and mean, one just one Butterfinger, you would you would go vote. I would. You know your vote doesn't matter. Yeah. You don't want. You don't like any of the candidates. But so, you'll, you will go and you'll vote. All right. Political parties out there, if you want to buy my vote, <laughs> all you got to do is give me one Butterfinger, full size, king size. I'm upgrading. Oh, I want the king size, you're super bro. super delegating it. I don't well, like it. I'm super... No. Oh, king, you're getting greedy. Bernie Sanders has That's built what the political his, system has Bernie Sanders has me. built his entire career on people just uh, uh, his entire campaign on people donating lots of little bite-sized butterfingers and it adds up. You, you well, know, whereas Trump just has one big king-sized butterfinger that he's All right, I'm voting for Trump. No, you just did it, Jack. No. You convinced me. Donald Trump is the butterfinger of people. Well, if you're getting a butterfinger, I guess it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, so it's worth mentioning there was a bit of controversy in this episode, just to be kind of complete. I saw this on Wikipedia. And, and it has nothing to do with uh, Mo being a rapist. It has nothing to do with Mo being a rapist. No, it is because there was a line um, where Carl at one point said, I could really go for some kind of military dictator like Juan Perón. When he disappeared you, you stayed disappeared. We didn't talk about that. That was yeah, back yeah. Uh, earlier on. And uh, apparently that caused a bit of a controversy in Argentina. Oh, uh, they did. They thought that was uh, t- tasteless. Yes, it sure was. It, it was banned. It was. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that was. I don't really know much about Argentina. So, so let's say it was a Stalin joke. Stalin killed yeah. tens of millions of innocent Soviets uh, and Russians. Uh, 
I feel like if they made a Stalin joke, I think we're far enough removed from it now to be like, all right, right. whatever. Apparently, they did not air this episode in Latin America except for Brazil, and then they finally aired it in Argentina in February because of, of that one line. Or? Because of that, yeah. Cut the line out. I mean, it's not a great episode, just so the, you can just I, not why, have wouldn't the it be easier to cut the line? Well, it was integral to the plot, Jack. <laughs> of course, um, this was a whole Evita thing. <laughs> I know there is an episode that is a whole Vita thing. I've actually it, seen it. Is it really? Yeah, there is in season 16, I think. Oh. It's a musical. Oh. We'll get there. Don't cry. It's been me. suggested. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so basically, uh, Lisa's like, leave him alone, leave him alone. And then this is when we find out that Ralph actually wants to run for president because he wants to yes. make America great again. I liked this. Except it came out of nowhere. Again, if we were following Ralph, Ra- Ralph is... You're is, right. For, the, for Ralph being the focal point of this episode, he's not in it. He's, he's he has not no there. presence in the episode He has no all. presence. But what I liked about it was... That shouldn't be a surprise. I liked that there was some agency that Ralph was taking where it looked like to Lisa as a, as a, a Budinsky yeah. that they're all using him. And he's yeah. like, maybe I'm using them yeah. because I want to make America great again. Which is out of character. He's, like, he's dumb. He's it's completely dumb. out of character. I just like the uh, the subversion there. Of, yeah, uh, I just feel like they didn't earn that. I feel It doesn't make sense. No, they didn't at all. It, I would have liked them to do that better. Yeah, again, that could have been the story. If you want to do this episode, give it a story. So you have Ralph set up early on. You have it be about Ralph from the beginning of act two mm-hmm. uh he is being a pawn and then at some point he realizes that he can use them and that's your arc yeah that's, that that's worked. the turning point yeah that would have worked much better for he, me you know he, he either through conversations or scenes with lisa or somebody else or maybe uh you get uh, uh another guest spot even though you already had a few in this yeah. you get like a former politician or somebody who right. get, you know has a heart to heart with him and he's just like you know you can use them it's something something would have been great instead we get nothing we get so yeah so he goes i'm gonna i'm gonna run and it opens it's a cool shot he opens the door and walks into the media and we see it from lisa's point of view in the living room yeah uh, and it's really cool because it, it's very cinematic where he's like just kind of entering the uh the the frock the the fracas yeah you know, entering the fray yeah exactly and he just seems you know he seems like ready for it it's very cinematic it's a cool shot and then it ends with his uh, campaign with a ad. campaign ad yes I, I think Ralph was adorable with a tie and rolled up sleeves he was yeah he was it very, was good he looked like a cute little Ted Cruz honestly I don't <laughs> You don't think Ted Cruz is cute? You know, would you want to have a beer with him, Jack? I, 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 you know, I mean, I think giving you should only give the, the nuclear football to somebody you want to get drunk with. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and, and, come on, you got to vote for Ted Cruz, uh, if listeners, because I he's don't a, have to vote for Ted you Cruz. You have to you, if you want that <laughs> I re- butterfinger. I because, refuse to vote for Ted Cruz because he's a Simpsons fan. Those great, imper- know, those great impressions he did. I don't know if I would call him a fan. If he was a fan, he wouldn't have done those impressions. <laughs> Uh, no, we were, just just in case it wasn't zero, you know. Uh, I just want to be clear: don't vote for Ted Cruz, no. even even if he gives you two butterfly. No, I'll no. buy you three. Okay, <laughs> deal. No, I don't, I don't have money to buy you three. No, I'm sorry, sorry, Ted Cruz is gonna be <laughs> be president now. Who's stepping I, into the White House? Because I couldn't live up to my butterfinger <laughs> that's promises. Why, that's the one. Re- he won by one vote. <laughs> they did a popular vote for some reason. They said forego the electoral college this year. Uh, if only they did that in 2000. Am huh? I right? Uh, oh, man. Uh, that George W. Bush, what a dum-dum. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't even eat a pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't. That was funny. Uh, maybe Ralph Wiggum should be president. Yeah, maybe he should be. I mean, his campaign commercial was pretty good. I, I liked I, it. I, I, liked, I liked him sitting in Lincoln's lap and talking to him as if he's Santa. Yeah. I thought that was funny. The whole commercial was, was, it was cute. It was not the funniest thing in the world, but it was funny enough. I think, it, didn't it start, it was like thorough, resourceful. Ralph Wiggum doesn't know these words. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was, was kind of okay. funny. Uh, I it wasn't crazy about his campaign slogan it was like uh, "pick your candidate" because he picks his nose. But I did like. Uh, I like at the at the very yeah. end. Yeah, he goes Ralph Wiggum. He's been a good boy. Yeah, that that's funny. Well, no, it was it was um, oh, instead of I approve this oh, message. Yeah. It's I'm Ralph Wiggum and I've and been I, a good boy. Yeah, exactly. I'm yeah, sorry. I like yeah, that. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, that was. Good. And then the episode ends. And that was the end of the episode. And I was like, "Are you kidding me? Yeah. How is this the end? Nothing that, happened. That that just is evidence numero uno." Evidence A, Alpha A, top of the heap, king of the hill. It's uh, <laughs> you know, it, that just shows you that this is not a, an episode. It's not a story. It no. is a viral video, Butterfinger commercial. It, this because was, it, is, it doesn't need an ending. This was kind of just an exercise in political humor from the Simpsons staff. Yeah, and yeah, I don't see why. I'm not that bothered. could be an episode. I'm not even that bothered that it just suddenly ends, and I wasn't surprised because there was no beginning or middle. Yeah, that's why I was just like, "All right, it's over." Is if this was if, if there was a story, and we've had episodes like this where there was a beginning and a middle, and then yeah. it kind of ends abruptly. Usually, yeah, we get, we're, 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 we're like, "Oh man, that was stupid and weird." I don't care here because you don't need an ending because there's right. no beginning and middle. We accuse there's the show nothing. of being a series of gags, but much more so than other episodes. Even I yeah. feel this was the the archetypal 
episode yeah, of it's that. A, it's like Hollow Man. There's no story. If, if you're a Hollow Man, and, and I mean an actual Hollow, not invisible. If you're Hollow, there's okay. nothing inside you. You don't need a butthole. You don't need... <laughs> there's nothing to... Where come, is this analogy going, Jack? Th- I'm just saying, you don't need an this ending. This episode's a butthole? If you, if you don't need an ending, if you, if you don't have a beginning and middle, you don't need a butthole if there's nothing to poop out. There's nothing That's, to... <laughs> Right? Am I am I wrong? I don't know that I fall, <laughs> totally follow your analogy, but maybe the listeners do. <laughs> I should have yeah. used this on the on CBC you, radio. You should have. The Simpsons is like a butthole. <laughs> they don't have to shit there's, anymore. There's nothing to poop out. <laughs> and that's it for the episode. The episode just ends, and uh, I don't think it ever began. I don't. I don't, I don't think it's. Do, do you think I, this was a fever dream that we shared together? I, I, we don't, we I, didn't actually watch an episode. Maybe it's. I wouldn't call it an episode. Yeah, I I, it's I like mean, a really long YouTube bit. This is a tough. This is gonna right, be a tough so one to rank. At the time of this recording, tomorrow uh, they're going to do the live episode of The Simpsons, right? That's tomorrow. Yes. So, so we're clearly so recording this way in yeah, advance. So it's been like a week and a half it's ago today, from, from when this aired. <laughs> it's yeah. tonight. So, um, oh yeah, today's a Sunday. All right. Yep. Anyway, anyway, we record so, on Sundays, yeah. guys. So I don't know much about this live thing because I honestly don't give a shit. But f- apparently, he'll be answering questions just for a couple minutes at the end of the show. It probably won't have anything right. to do with the actual. Episode. I would. I was considering like, oh, maybe I'll live tweet it or like try to submit a question. And then I realized well, it's, it, tonight's yeah. wrestling. Yeah, so I'm who, sorry. Who cares? <laughs> I don't watch anything when wrestling's on. We'll, we'll watch the episode eventually. So that whatever. But uh, I'm assuming it's just going to be this thing that has nothing to do with the rest of the episode. It won't be story oriented because he's doing fan right. submit. You know, questions from the fans. Yeah. That's what this should have been. Like a weird two minute thing that's like has nothing. How do you make an episode out of Homer answering questions live? You can't. But somehow right. they did here. They made an episode out of this, what this if, viral video. What if this episode had been more of a like an event type thing where there was like a contest or like I was thinking that you too. decide you, how yeah, the episode you ends vote or for something. Somebody. It should have been Ralph versus somebody and you vote for. Yeah. No, I was thinking that actually while we were talking and I was like, should I bring this up? And yeah. I was like, like no, a, let me just make some stupid. Uh, like in the 80s when they did. Dracula um, jokes and stuff. <laughs> oh, I love stupid Dracula jokes. <laughs> Duh, I'm Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> where, where do I, where's the vein? I don't know. Do I need some water again? Do I drink? Pee pee or blood? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid Dracula doesn't know when, whether there's really pee pee or blood. <laughs> Our newest bus stop character. Move on. <laughs> this blood tastes salty. <laughs> Did you eat asparagus? <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna go to the beach. I gotta get some soap. Oh Dude. no! <laughs> And that was the end of Stupid and Dracula. He died. He died. Yeah, that he was killed it. Himself out of stupid, just, that was it. She was stupidity. I was going to bring up the whole Batman thing in the eighties, where they were, had a, a call-in thing to decide whether Robin, Robin died or dies. not. Yeah, no, something like done. that here. That I feel like would have worked. That would have worked. It would have helped. It still needed a well, story. It's, I don't know if it would have worked, but it's, it would have made this easier yeah. to understand. There was two ways to do this: either you don't make it an episode, you make it something else, something extra, or you make it an episode and you give it a rightful story, an actual beginning, an actual media, a middle. Right. And an actual end. But I think making it more of like a media stunt could have uh, softened the blow of it not having any sort right. of story whatsoever. And that's, by, that's by saying there's no opinion. ending, it's not totally fair. You can end with the story unresolved. Like, is he going to win? Is he going to lose? Like, you yeah. know, there's movies that end like that where it, the journey was the point. Right. But there's no journey here. So that's, No journey at all. So again, so I, honestly, I don't really think the fact... I, I, the crime isn't that there's no ending. The crime is that there's no anything. There's no story. There's no anything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, agreed. This is John Stewart reporting from Springfield. Do I need to say my name? People know me, right? No, it's just cable, but you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to just... <sighs> Great, now I'm worried. All right, so it is time to rank this episode. That's it for E Pluribus Wiggum. So, Jack, we're going to do this on our hippo scale, looking at the humor, the integrity, the production values, and the originality. We're going to rank each from zero to five. We're going to put two minutes on our clock. Dude, which button turns on the clock? Dude. That's the reality to do with a vampire. That sounded like dumb DiCaprio Dracula. <laughs> De Dracula? <laughs> it's dumb to Dracula. I hope I won for the Revenant and then I suck some peepy water. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't even know if I want that in here. Well, it's in for now. We said we we technically By the f- way, by now we would know if he won his first Oscar. Yeah. So okay, if he did, I don't know what, I don't know what good that does. Him, if he did, put this in. Damn, I'm a ghost. I came back to win an Oscar. No, we don't. We, we, we can't bring DiCaprio back. He is dead. But if he was a vampire, he would have survived being killed by Bill Bergdahl and uh, and Matthew Fox. I, I don't say Ed Matthew Fox. Uh, and now he is the d- d- Dracula. <laughs> the Dracula. All right. So that's a different character. So we're allowed to do it. He is everyone and everything, and he doesn't know whether to drink pee pee or blood. <laughs> I'm Dracula. <laughs>
<laughs> nope, cut that. I don't know. That didn't work. It's funny on paper. Two minutes on the clock. <laughs> beep, boop, beep. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're looking at the humor, Jack. What do you got? Zero out of five. Uh, did, I like the joke in the funny beginning. Stuff. With there Mr. was some funny Burns. stuff in this episode. One point five. I'm gonna go a little higher. I think I'm gonna say two. I'm gonna say a two for this one because there was stuff I liked. John, John yeah. Stewart was not the whole scene was not great, but there was some good stuff. Whatever. Uh, the integrity of this episode. Zero to five. What are we thinking? Um, Homer picking Ralph Wiggum <laughs> that seemed a little out of Homer character again that the writers that's not Homer yeah I mean um, there's really there is no integrity to this episode this yeah. is worse than last week's episode which also had yeah, no integrity nobody's acting out of character but there's I, nothing I say it's negative there's I, no reason for anyone to do anything I'm saying one on this one so we're, we're, we're flip flopping around here uh, the production values of this episode. That, there was that, that CGI, CGI thing. Eagle at no point, and the CGI yeah. was kind of bad, to be honest, compared to what we saw. Uh, I mean, I guess it's a, a few years before, it, but we saw last week we watched the, the Pixar parody and all that stuff. Right, that, that was a couple a years better. afterwards. Yeah, um, I did I really know. like there that shot. Nothing... I did like the shot of Ralph walking into the. Uh, into the cameras at the end. There was, and I like the commercial. Oh, oh, in the beginning. The commercial itself. And, and the, yeah, in the commercial. And in the beginning, there was a really interesting direction choice to uh, only show Burns and the man from, from right. the outside looking And Mr. Burns uh, the dancing was a great out. animation. Yeah, you know what? I, I'm, I'm kind of high 3. in the production. Yeah. 3.5 is even higher than I was going to go. I'm going to go 3. Above average. Slightly above average production-wise. But finally, the originality of this episode. Have I ever given out a zero ever? Uh, I don't believe you have. I'm going to give it a zero. All right. I'm also going to give it a zero. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You know what? All right. I, I, I'm already walking back on it. <laughs> I, I'll give it a 0.5 because it is origi- it's an original idea, but there's not- we also consider storytelling and structure in this category, and there's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing here. There's no storytelling. There's well, no structure. No, it's okay, nothing. There's what, what, no story. What you just said actually made me realize this is a good idea for a better episode, so I'm going to give it 0. 0.5. Yeah, the 0.5 for the, fi- idea. the 0.5 is for the idea. Yeah. It's a shame. It should be a 2.5, but there's literally nothing. Yeah, no, there's there's nothing here. Okay, so we have crunched our numbers, and E. Pluribus Wiggum has ranked as a slightly better episode than Trios of Horror 20, and a slightly worse episode than There's Something About Marrying. That puts it at number 30 on our list, right? Wow, Sna- I would have expected it to be worse. Well, but I guess it's not offensively bad. There's just nothing There's nothing to rank. I feel like that's a stretch of episodes there that are just not good, but not yeah. terrible. This would have been a great, great Butterfinger commercial. It would have been a great Butterfinger commercial, and nobody better lay a finger on it. But that is it for this episode of Worst Episode Ever. If you have an episode you'd like to submit, you can do that on our website. It's weepodcast.com. That's W-E-E podcast.com. And while you're there, you can get to our Facebook page, our Twitter accounts. Yeah. Keep them and coming. Our, we, our we've got plenty of submissions to get us through the next year or so, but yes. uh, they, we're going to do them all. So keep, keep, coming. keep them coming. And um, we, we've shut down the comments on our website, so oh, just yeah, use yeah. the Reddit now. Uh, it's uh, There should be links to it everywhere on our website. Uh, and if you're in Brooklyn area, you should come to Woo Classic Simpsons Trivia tonight because it's Diorama Rama. Right. We will share our photos from Diorama Rama. It's always a great time. Yeah. If you haven't made your Diorama yet, uh, if you can rush and, and do one, but no cow hearts. No cow hearts. <laughs> for the love of God, please, no cow hearts. And also, uh, if you, you should listen to 90s Percentile, which is our other yeah. podcast that we do. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and you guys have been great about listening to it and supporting it and, and telling your to friends. to be honest, there's actually less stupid characters and, and, it is. and dumb vampires. Uh, we so. kind of created it to be the, the repertory, the rep- repository, not repertoire, repository for all of our nonsense stuff. And it sort of is, but it's, it's actually also not. A lot it's gotten less a little more serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we talk about very serious issues on that show. Yeah, it's all abortion and, it's uh, all about and abortion. terrorism. That's, that's it. <laughs> Every episode. <laughs> it's, it's a startling 60 minutes. Uh, but that's a good we show. Should... Our next guest, Werner Herzog. <laughs> I love Werner Herzog. He's such a good character to have. <laughs> and they go go hang out with the other undead Busta guy. They're breaking up into categories. There's so many of them now. <laughs> We're staging a war <laughs> against the living. <laughs> My goodness, I'm going to need to take shelter. (laughs) Bye-bye, everybody. (laughs) I'm staying out of this until I can think of something funny to do. (laughs) I don't know where I rank. Do you remember me? I've fallen out of favor. I still think you're great. See? I love the Dalek. See? This is all a bit of a huge (laughs) trench. And there may be a new sync points out. (laughs) I'm not sure. Christopher Clestine was the best doctor. See? (laughs) There may be a new sync point out. Uh, if there is, it's about Batman 1989, which is on Netflix. So that'll be two bucks. You can get that on our website, too, wepodcast.com, if you forgot what website we're on. If you want to basically listen to this, but also watch Batman at the yeah, same time. It's basically like, <laughs> it's like watching a movie with you and I and whoever our guest might be. 
Maybe there's no guest. I don't know. Who Maybe knows? Batman is our guest. <laughs> that would be kind of that great. would be awesome. Or I would Bane. love that. Or Bane. <laughs> I I, I merely enjoyed the 1989 Batman, but you two were adopted by it. Uh, got away, got away, away from me. me. Got way away. Way away. Anyway. Anyway. No, 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 no. I don't know. That's it. Let's just let's just end it right here. Cut all this. So, what do we think? Well, I thought every part of it was good, but overall, I hated it. I feel exactly the opposite, but the same. That was the best milkshake ad I've ever seen. Makes me want a milkshake.